hello again and as promised here is the tool of science it's beautiful it is a square divided into four equal squares known as the Punnett square and who do you think invented it go ahead do your best who do you think invented it that's right a gentleman by the name of Punnett Mendel didn't create it Punnett did but it coincides with Mendel's research. So, the Punnett square. It is a square divided into four equal sections that tells you all of the possible outcomes of a genetic cross. All the ways that those alleles or those dominant recessive alleles could potentially combine together to make an outcome, an offspring. So, how exactly is it that one does a Punnett square? Lucky for you, I have a whiteboard of science. Okay, so one will start by drawing a box. Dividing that box into four equal boxes. And there you go. Now, in the olden days when Punnett created the Punnett square, the man was the head of the house. And to me, the Punnett square looks like a little house. At that time, the woman, or the female, would stand by her man. I know that this is a horrible way to remember it, but this is the way we talked about it in class. The other thing that was very popular around the time of Punnett was the fact that ladies would always go first. So as you're seeing on the screen right now, you always move the female's alleles first. Again, I'm going to draw my box. Ooh, that was a bad box. Let me try again. I am going to draw the box, not holding it in the air. So here I go, drawing a box. Here is the box. It is a beautiful box. See? I've drawn my box. I'm going to put the male alleles on top. And I, for this purpose, I'm going to use Mendel's F2 cross. So I'm going to use a dominant allele and a recessive allele. And then on the side, I'm going to put the female's alleles dominant and recessive. Ladies alleles go first, so I'm going to bring her big R over and then over again and the little one over and over again. So with me? Then I'm going to bring the father's alleles down and down again. And that is all there is to doing a Punnett square. It is that simple. But it was able to tell us <laughs> what the possible outcomes would be. If I crossed this parent with this parent, I would have one, two, three. We can use capital R to represent eye color. So I'd have one, two, three brown-eyed offspring, and then one not brown or green-eyed maybe offspring. Anytime there's that capital letter, so there's two capital letters, there's a capital letter, there's a capital letter. Anytime there's a capital letter in the box, it's going to look like the dominant trait. So in our eye color analogy, anytime there's a capital R, it's going to look like a brown-eyed offspring. Anytime there's not a capital letter, it's going to look like whatever the recessive trait is. And then we call these characteristics by either their phenotype or their genotype. The phenotype is going to refer to how it looks. So, for example, if we were talking about Gregor Mendel's pea plants again, if it was a tall pea plant, the trait would be height. Height is the trait. But the way that that specific pea plant looks, that's going to be its phenotype. So, for example, short would be a phenotype. Tall would be a phenotype. Blue would be a phenotype. The specific appearance of that trait would be a phenotype. The genotype is going to be the genetic makeup of the offspring. So the combination of alleles are simply its genotype. And it's kind of nice because it has a P, phenotype has a P for physical, and then genotype has the G for gene. Uh, to go back to genotype, there are two different genotypes that you can potentially have. You can have a homozygous genotype. A homozygous genotype would be where you have two of the same case 
alleles. So for example, you could have capital R, capital R, which would be homozygous dominant, or you could have lowercase r, lowercase r, which would be homozygous recessive. Both of these have the same case letter representing them. This one has two capital letters, capital letters representing the dominant trait, so homozygous dominant. This one has two lowercase letters, two lowercase letters, lowercase representing the, the recessive trait, so homozygous recessive. Other times you wind up with a capital letter paired with a lowercase letter. This would be considered heterozygous. That prefix hetero meaning different, heterozygous, two different cases of letter. What would its phenotype be? Its phenotype is going to be whatever the dominant trait is. Because it has a capital letter, it's going to look dominant. So anytime you have a heterozygous phenotype or genotype, you don't have to say it's heterozygous dominant. Because heterozygous are always going to look like the dominant phenotype. That makes me really happy. It makes it a little bit easier. So we practiced a little bit inside of your book. If you had smooth pea pods and you knew that smooth was the dominant trait, you would be able to say that the genotype could be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So here we could have um, big S, big S, homozygous dominant, and then big S, little s for heterozygous. The pinched pea pod plants, try to say that five times, pinched pea pod plant, pinched pea pod plant, pinched pea pod pod The pinched pea pod plants would always be homozygous recessive. Always going to be a combination of two little s's. So, let's do a cross together. Remember, you're going to start by drawing the square. For this exercise, I have given you the genotype, or the genetic makeup, of both the mother and the father. Which one do you think is the genotype for the mother? If you were saying this one, you are correct, which makes the genotype for the father right here. But are they homozygous or heterozygous? If you said homozygous, dominant for the mother, and heterozygous for the father, you are correct. And then we have to figure out what percent of their offspring would be homozygous versus heterozygous. So I have my marker again. I'm going to draw my square. Are you drawing yours? And I'm going to put the father's alleles on the top, and the mother's alleles on the side. And then I'm going to do my cross. Remember, bring the mother's alleles over, and then the father's alleles. It's really hard to do this upside down. I give up. Okay. And then. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. So. What percent of my offspring are what? To me, it looks like I have two homozygous dominant, because they both have capital letters, and two heterozygous. Homozygous dominant, heterozygous. Awesome. Alrighty, these are two trickier ones. I'm gonna let you try to see if you can solve them. And I know you can. If you need to rewatch the video, please do so. And I hope you have an excellent evening. Remember, if you have questions, come see me Monday before school or come and see me Monday after school. I am here. Come see me. Use the flashcards. Have a great weekend. Bye.